Hi there. Welcome to the channel. My name is Alana, and I'm the creator of the Health Analytic Insights Podcast, where I interview guests and talk all things health informatics. Hi there. Thanks so much for joining this webinar, and this is going to be all about essential tips to starting your career in health informatics. The purpose of this webinar is to give you a general understanding of the common skills used in this field and how one can prepare for their first role when applying for jobs in health informatics. So in this webinar, I hope to answer questions such as what are the common skills advertised in health informatics? What is a typical day in the life? An overview of common technical tools used in the field? What are job roles you can search for in this field? And how can I prepare for an interview in this field? And so these are not questions I just pulled out of the sky. These are questions that I've received from listeners from the Health Analytic Insights podcast, which I host. And these are questions that I often see and receive over and over again from listeners and see on several social media platforms. So I hope this webinar covers many of the questions you might have. If not, you can reach me at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. And I'll post that contact information at the end of the webinar if you have specific questions. So who am I? My background is in biomedical engineering. And as I said before, I run the Health Analytic Insights podcast, which is a podcast which talks all about topics related to health informatics. I also interview experts in the health informatics field to track their journey because I've always found it super frustrating when you read or hear from someone who has been successful in their career and then someone asks them, how did they end up where they are now? And the response is, I just fell into it. So I try to provide actionable tips on the podcast and showcase it as a resource for those looking to both get into the health informatics field and those looking to continue to progress their career in the health informatics field. I currently work in the health informatics space and of course, I love all types of fries. But enough about me, let's get into the webinar. So if you look at enough job descriptions in the field, you'll start to see patterns on key skills that are often advertised for roles in health informatics. And these skills include some clinical experience, and this could be working previously as a nurse or a pharmacy technician, a clinical research assistant in the hospital, or at the help desk in a hospital. It could also be through obtaining a degree through academic means, so obtaining your master's in health informatics. You might also see these roles advertising for people who have experience with data visualization tools. And this can be something as standard as experience building charts and graphs in Excel to experience with more advanced tools such as Power BI and Tableau. So by the way, this is just a, a tip. If you're interested in learning data visualization, just in general, I would suggest downloading Power BI Desktop, which you can do so for free by searching through it, either through the Microsoft Store or PowerBIDesktop.com. And you can go on Microsoft Learn, which contains tons of free tutorials and modules where you can beef up your data visualization skills just in general. So one programming language that you might see advertised over and over again for health informatics roles is experience with SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language. This is a language that is used to interact with data stored in databases. And with the move to digitizing healthcare records, the amount of data that is stored and collected in healthcare organizations has exponentially grown. And this is one of the reasons why a career in health informatics can truly be fulfilling as problems are always changing and there's never a dull moment. To be able to sort through all the different types of healthcare data that exists from healthcare claims, blood work data from the labs, and patient demographic information, SQL is used to sort through tons of healthcare data and organize messy data into actionable information. And later on in the presentation, I will give an example of how this can be done with SQL. And finally, another skill you might see commonly advertised in these health informatics jobs are strong communication skills. And of course, this is key in most roles, but especially it is important in the health informatics field. Oftentimes you will be, quote unquote, the analytical translator. And this is a term that was coined from a McKinsey article, which I believe describes the role of the health informatics professional beautifully. 
So you might be meeting with clinicians who would like a program or report designed, which helps them better track certain key clinical metrics. And they might not have the knowledge to know what technical tools would be best to solve this problem. And so it will be up to you to either design this solution yourself or to have conversations with IT or other technical developers to communicate the insights of the clinicians and work with them to build a solution. So before we get into the next slide on the day in the life of a healthcare analyst, we'll be doing a deep dive with a lot of information in this webinar. If you want this information in a summarized format, I've written an ebook on the topic on how to get your first job in health informatics. And this ebook will contain all of the summarized information that I'm talking about during this webinar. So I'm pro providing those who sign up to this webinar a discount code of 20% off of the ebook with the discount code FRIES, F-R-I-E-S 20. You can find a link to the book to the description box of this video. So on to the day in the life of a healthcare data analyst. And a healthcare data analyst can fall into the health informatics field. It is a common position that uses a lot of the skills that I just talked about. So let's take a typical example. Patients being readmitted back into hospital is often a huge issue for hospitals because it is often costly. For instance, in 2018, the Canadian Institute for Health Information estimated readmission to hospitals cost more than $2.1 billion a year in Canada. And oftentimes being readmitted back into the hospital can lead to negative adverse effects for the patient. And there's been research which shows a reduction in patient readmission rates when there's a follow-up call. And this could help with things like medication adherence and also from a mental health standpoint, allow patients to feel more supported by the hospital. So imagine your boss wants you to create a report which can determine which diabetic patients might be at risk for readmission so that this information can be flagged to community nurses who are carrying out the follow-up with patients. So you might think the first step would be to just start diving into the data, but really the first step is often to have conversations with clinicians. You want to make sure that you're understanding the problem from a 360 degree lens before you start to do any additional analysis. So this could look like asking the community nurses, what are the key characteristics of patients who are often readmitted back into the hospital? Do they tend to generally be on several different types of medication? Is it age related? This is where your relevant clinical experience, going back to those commonly posted skills for health informatic positions come into play. So having that clinical background, that clinical expertise can come in hand when it comes to guiding the questions you might ask of clin clinical staff. So once you have this correct frame of reference, then the next step would be to sort through the data. So here we are in SQL Server Management Studio, and I have my data written over here. So we have one table, when I execute this, that has the patient demographic information of these diabetic patients. So these can be things like the health card number, the patient number, the race, the gender, age, weight. And then we also have another table that has diagnostic information. So the number of lab procedures, how long they've spent in the hospital. Example, time in hospital. So this is another common metric known as the patient length of stay. And this is the time that the patient was admitted to the time they were discharged. And then of course we have our outcome variable, which is if they were readmitted back into hospital. So we might want to join this patient diagnostic diagnosis table with the patient demographic information together. Because to do that, we would do a join clause. And so now we have both the patient demographics table and the patient diagnosis table joined together based on the common column that they have, which is encounter ID. And then we can do some further quick analysis. We can take this table and see broken down by gender, female versus male, how many patients have been readmitted back into hospital to see if that is a characteristic that we might want to note. 
So here we have a count to count the gender. We have a group by to break it down by gender and if they're readmitted back into hospital. So going back to the first step of having conversations with clinicians regarding what would be key characteristics of people who are often readmitted back into hospital, this is an example of feature selection where you may have many different clinical factors in your data set, such as age, gender, weight, length of stay, and you're trying to sort through all these features to determine which of these clinical factors are highly correlated with your outcome variable. So in this case, it's the patient readmission back into hospital. And using open source tools like Python or R when it comes to feature selection is another option based on mathematical algorithms. So if you're interested in learning more about Python or R, you can download that for free. And that is often highly used, especially in data science fields if you're interested in merging data science and healthcare, I would highly suggest learning Python or R. So as you can see from the analysis that I did in SQL, as well as if you carry out analysis in R or Python, you wouldn't want to present clinicians or your boss messy, unstructured code, especially as many people are visual learners. And it can be best to summarize your insights through the use of charts and graphs. And this is where your skills using Excel, Power BI or Tableau can come in handy. So here we have a very basic report created in Power BI, and it just kind of summarizes some of the analysis that's done, that was done in SQL and the other technical tools into more graphs and charts that can be easier for people to understand. And with Power BI, one of the great aspects of it is the filtering capability. So if I selected this graph, You'll see the number will change. If I select here, the number will change as well. And then you can even have things like buttons, which can make your report more interactive for users. So again, I would definitely consider learning a tool like Tableau or Power BI Desktop if you're interested in a career in health informatics because it allows you to create products for the end user in a way that's easier for them to understand. So this has been an overview of some of the skills and tools used in the health informatics space, primarily if you're really interested in the healthcare analytics side of the health informatics field. So to recap, have conversations with clinicians, sort through lots of data using SQL, create graphs and tables to summarize your findings in tools such as Excel, Tableau, or Power BI, and finally present your findings and answer questions with your strong communication skills. So don't forget to type your questions in the comment section of this video. You can also download my free guide to starting your career in health informatics, which will also be linked in the description box along with the ebook on starting your career in health informatics. And now that you have a good idea of what are the types of skills and tools often used and advertised by employers, we can now move along to the job searching process. So oftentimes I'll get this question from listeners of the podcast, what job should I be searching for? I don't even know where to start. And this makes a lot of sense because this field is relatively new and doesn't tend to have established titles as other fields such as a project manager or a business analyst. Therefore, I advise people to search for a technical tool they might have experience in or interest in, plus the word healthcare. So for example, one could enter in Power BI plus healthcare into the search box of Indeed or LinkedIn. In addition, once you start searching enough with this criteria, you will start to see some common job titles. And they all tend to have the word analyst in them. So for example, the clinical systems analyst, the EHR analyst, information systems analyst, clinical decision support analyst, and or application analyst. And these might be some job titles that exist where you live. So when it comes to resume review, I go into much greater detail 
on how to structure your resume in the ebook, but some tips include adding a resume summary to the top of your resume, expressing your interest in the field, especially if you do not have any prior experience, and linking to a portfolio project you can create using some of the technical tools I've described, such as Power BI and SQL. And on my channel, I have a step-by-step -step guide showing you how to build your own clinical business intelligence portfolio that you can link to your resume to showcase employers of your initiative. And I also link to the video in the cards. And once you've created your own portfolio project, you can link to this and showcase to employers your initiative for getting started in this field. One thing I'll just say about this is I've reviewed a couple of resumes that people have sent to me. And especially if you have prior clinical experience, it might not be in health informatics, but if you have experience with systems like Epic or Cerner, this is really great to highlight on your resume. And better yet, if you can become a super user of these systems, super user is an individual who gets extra training and documentation on these EHR systems such as Epic or Cerner and really becomes that go-to person between the clinical staff and the vendor. So if you can position yourself into this role and write about that on your resume, that's also another boost in your favor. So now onto some common health informatic interview questions. So some health informatic interview questions that I have received and I have heard from others or what would you do if a doctor came into your office and immediately wanted you to build a report ASAP? And how would you prioritize demands from different healthcare departments for reports? So with these two above questions, interviewers might be testing your prioritization skills and how you organize multiple projects. In this field, you will probably be serving multiple different departments, different clinicians, and being able to prioritize and manage multiple different projects is key in this role. And also being able to keep your manager in the loop and any other coworkers that you're working on with project requests may be received from external stakeholders and departments. So when it comes to preparing for the health informatic interview, don't forget that some key requirements that are often displayed in health informatic job postings are an understanding of clinical terminology, experience dealing with large clinical data sets to drive decision making, experience with writing SQL queries, experience with data visualization tools such as Power BI, Tableau, or Click, experience working with a multidisciplinary team, and a relevant degree in a health discipline. Therefore, many of the interview questions will often be linked to these key requirements. I have many of these questions that I've received in my actual health informatic interviews linked in the ebook in the description box below. So I hope this webinar has provided you with some helpful tips and tricks for getting that first job in health informatics and I wish you all the best on your journey. So again if you have any questions you can reach out to me at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com and I hope you have a wonderful day.